I'm Rachel Hausman, and my job is workplace safety. So I've worked with companies both in the US and abroad on helping to manage safety, making sure employees don't get injured, keeping companies out of trouble with OSHA, and when accidents, injuries, and fatalities do occur, sometimes I'm one of the people that get called in to investigate what went wrong. Now, if I look familiar to you, it's maybe because we've met at this conference before in previous years where I've been with my dad, or you might have seen the Montana Logging Association's new first aid video, which my company, Ally Safety, put together. So as somebody who grew up in a logging family, it means a lot to me to be able to sit here and talk to you. And I know that your time is valuable, so let's get going. The warm up. Give yourself a minute to think about the last time you took a risk and it didn't turn out the way you had planned. Now, it could be something that happened at work or at home or anywhere in between. The thing is, we've all been there before. And even me in safety, I have as well. And since my company started doing safety videos about two years ago, I have the unfortunate luck of some of the things that I misjudge the most being caught on camera. So I'll share a few of them with you. So in this one, I underestimated how big a rock underneath the snow was. You could just barely see it above the snow line. It was a surprise. It's like one of those moments where you lay there for a minute and you're like, am I okay? I think I'm okay. And luckily I was, but that's the aftermath of the snowmobile. Clearly I miscalculated. Now, this next one is one where my company and I, we were doing one of our first science project sort of experiments that was gonna be filmed. And we just happened to be doing it on flammable gases. What could go wrong? So what you're gonna see on this next video is you're gonna see in the beginning, there's a big beaker on the table and I'm trying to pour out this gas that's on top, that's in a beaker to show what happens when you have a flammable gas that's heavier than air. The thing was, it didn't quite have the right beaker. We hadn't practiced this before going on camera. And so as you might expect, things didn't go super smoothly. So this first experiment we're gonna do is with a gas that's heavier than air. So what I've got in here are three candles inside a big beaker. And then I've got a small amount of liquid in this Florence beaker. If it's heavier than air, it'll sink to the bottom and it may make the flames react. So let's go. Anyway, don't try this at home. <laughs> we cut that out of the final video and so, so far nobody's asked why the background is black at the beginning of it and white at the end. <laughs> so the reason I show you this is we all make these mistakes. But in safety, we believe that every accident is preventable. And I know that sounds tedious and a little bit obsessive, but I've been in safety for 10 years now, and I have to tell you that it's actually true. For those of you that are skeptical, remember hindsight is 2020, and so you can always look back and see things that you could have done differently or better that would have prevented the incident from happening. What I see a lot of the time when I investigate injuries and fatalities is that people either saw the risk and underestimated it, or they saw the risk and they decided it was worth taking because they didn't really think it would happen to them. Often, they're kind of looking for an exchange that's a reward, which we'll get into soon. How many of us in here have ever seen a truck with a tree-sized dent in it? Yeah, some of us in here may even be responsible for those dents but I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands. <laughs> so what usually happens here is somebody's about to do a cut or they've been cutting for a while. You know the feeling, you don't wanna stop to go move a vehicle. Now the reward is you don't have to take that five minutes out of what you're doing and you're pretty sure you can make it work. The risk is the truck. So in terms of risk versus reward, we're talking five minutes versus a truck. And plenty of times the truck loses out on that one. Now, when we're gonna talk about risk with this, the important thing with risk is you need to know what sort of risk you're looking at to make that risk reward sort of decision. In the United States, the average year sees about 5,000 workplace fatalities. 
Now all of you in here probably know that logging is one of the most dangerous industries there is. So it's hard to say, okay, out of 5,000 fatalities nationwide, what percentage is that? It's teeny tiny. So they shorthand say it in a way that's easier to understand. For every 100,000 workers in the US, there were 3.4 fatalities in 2021. It's just an easier way to think of it. Now for loggers, for every 100,000 loggers in the US, there were 132.7 fatalities. So you can see your risk is a lot higher than other industries. Now, most people that I know in logging wouldn't have it any other way because they like what they do. So that's a pretty good reward overall, but you've got to be aware of the risks. Oh, one thing to note here, there's only about 50,000 people on average who are in logging in the US in a given year. So what that comes out to is about 60 to 70 workplace deaths for loggers in the United States each year. Now, if we're going to talk about non-fatal injuries, about 2.8% of the US workforce is going to get injured at work. That's what the stats were last year. Now, in terms of loggers, it's about 16.6%. And the interesting thing about this number is that we know that it's low. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, loggers are less likely to seek medical care for injuries. A lot of you are independent contractors, so you probably don't report your injuries to OSHA. And I mean, how often do you see people going in for, for minor injuries and in logging? So what I like about this number though, is if you're using mechanized logging, you can lower that 5% right away. That's what studies have found. So what's causing all the problems in the woods? This is what I gave you a handout on. If you want to get a little bit of a deeper dive into the top causes of fatalities in logging, you can go check out that video on YouTube. That's free. You can share it. You know, you can share it with your crew, use it in training or whatever you need. That's out there for you. So the top five causes are pretty much what you might think they would be. Being struck by a tree or a limb, being struck by equipment. That can include equipment rollovers, like um, Bill was talking about. That can include equipment not being in a zero energy state, state during maintenance being struck by implements, anything like that. Chainsaws are an issue, and if you look on that sheet, it talks a little bit about often it's people who are running away from a tree and fall on their chainsaw. So pretty rough day. Falls from heights, and of course, traffic incidents. The thing is, we make these risk versus reward decisions on a daily basis, and often we aren't really even conscious of doing it. But lives hinge on that split second decision. So you need the right information to make the best choice for yourself. And that's what we're gonna talk about here. If we wanna get technical about it, risk is the probability of harm or loss. Or the way that I like to think about it is, risk is kinda of like a measure of danger. And the problem with this is, risk and danger are fun. We all like to do things that involve a certain amount of risk. So it's kind of that moment in between the known and the unknown, the safe and the unsafe. A lot of you probably also have risky ha hobbies as well. So we like to have some risk. And the other part is danger is seen as cool. Safety is not. <laughs> I don't know anybody who's like, yeah, it's gonna be the safety talk this afternoon. I can't wait. Unless you guys are just really good at hiding your emotions. Cause I didn't see that. So case in point, have you guys heard of Austin Powers, the international man of mystery? Yeah, baby, yeah! He claimed his middle name was Danger. <laughs> That's how cool he was. For those of you who, like me, who thought it was James Bond, sorry to tell you, his middle name is actually Herbert. And in terms of coolness, it might as well have been safety. The thing about it is we like that little bit of suspense in our lives. That's why action movies always have people risking life and limb for some greater cause. Whether it's winning a war, workplace success, getting the girl, or the fight of good versus evil, that's what keeps us on the edge of our seat wanting to see more. It's exciting, and it makes it feel like all that risk was worthwhile at the end when they live happily ever after. There are cases in real life and in movies, though, where people take huge risks without any meaningful reward. And in those cases, the movie titles pretty much speak for themselves. Safety, on the other hand, there's a reason that safe, there's no safety video category at the Academy Awards. Yeah. If we were gonna make a video about safety, 
It would be first and foremost predictable because that's what safety gives us is predictability. It'd probably be a movie where you get up, the roads are pretty clear, you get to work on time, get a bit, quite a bit done in the morning, eat lunch on time, finish your day out, shut down the equipment, pack up your truck and are home in time for dinner. If we were putting out that kind of content, we would get slapped by Will Smith on stage. <laughs> so we get that safety's not cool or exciting. But in terms of risk versus reward, it's just no fair fight. So there's always a little bit of appeal when you're asking yourself, should I take the risk that makes it seem more fun and more cool than safety? The thing is, in life, risk is guaranteed. We also know that in your industry. We looked at it right away. Your risk is high and it's guaranteed. The unfortunate thing is rewards aren't guaranteed. At the best, we have an opportunity for a reward. For those of you who own your own businesses, this probably makes sense to you when it comes to bidding jobs. You bid a job, you think you know how long it'll take, how much it'll cost, and then things don't quite go like you think they will. Maybe somebody on your crew quits, the weather doesn't cooperate, the equipment breaks down, whatever the problem is. You had the opportunity for a profit, but you don't always get it. And I know this because I run my own business as well. So remember, you want to what we're trying to do is balance that risk with the reward. Now, when it comes to getting injured for work, the risk versus reward problem pretty much makes no sense. We work to make money, and almost the instant that you get injured, that starts being counterproductive. So, not only are you gonna have medical bills, but workers' comp in most states only pays about 60 to 70% of your income, and that's income that's dependent on taxes usually, so it kind of depends on how you did your taxes. Uh, you'll have increased insurance rates, loss production, travel for medical treatment, medications, and boy can those add up. The interesting thing about that too is now we're in the middle of this opioid epidemic and a lot of people who get hooked on opioids, it's because they had chronic pain from an injury starting out and it just grows from there. So you can see there's a lot tied up in this risk. So. The problem is we still have some misconceptions about what risk really is. How many of you ever heard this before? The greater the risk, the greater the reward. This is kind of one of those where in the footnotes it should say, if you're gonna be dumb, you've gotta be tough. Because <laughs> there are very few cases where this actually plays out. Think about it. So a good example of this is when you know that maybe you should put the, the chains on the tires before you drive up to a job site. You're kind of looking at the hill, you need to get out of the truck, get all muddy, and you're not really sure it's gonna pay out. It may not be worth it. You might get up there without the chains anyway. So a lot of times in this case, people will decide to take the risk. And yeah, some of the time it turns out and everything's fine, but it's usually the times that it doesn't turn out and you're starting to slide backwards with no control that it dawns on you that maybe the risk wasn't worth the reward. <laughs> or this one, take risks. If you win, you will be happy. If you lose, you will be wise. Now this one seems a little bit more true until you put it outside a Vegas casino. And in that case, if it were true, we would all leave Vegas wise instead of hung over and broke. Another interesting group that talks a lot about risk versus reward is investors. So here's what smart investors say. They say, the essence of investment management is the management of risks, not the management of returns. Meaning they're trying to avoid loss and hold on to what they've got. Now, for those of you who keep up with the markets, right now everybody's just concerned with keeping up with inflation. That's their big thing. They aren't even going for the risk and the rewards until they have that dialed in. And for this last quote, I'm gonna show you one from Warren Buffett. He's obviously very well known for being a great investor. And here's what he says about risk. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. And what he means by that is he does a ton of research. If he's gonna invest in the company, he gets to know their founders, he gets to know their board, he does his homework so he knows what he's up against. So that's what he means by knowing what you're doing. Knowing what you're up against in terms of your risk at work. Now we in safety think similarly. And the goal of this presentation is to manage risks 
to get greater rewards. I'm gonna give you an idea of how I would approach it if I were in your shoes, knowing what I know about safety and you guys knowing what you know about your work. We're gonna make a risk sandwich. So here's the thing, I've worked with companies that are world-class and companies that are no class and everywhere in between. And a lot of the rules are the same. So I'm gonna teach you some of what I've learned that are, and give you some shortcuts. Now, the middle of the risk sandwich, that's your risk being loggers. We aren't really able to change that. You have, you're in a dangerous industry, but we're gonna to try to manage it with hazard reduction and loss management. So, in terms of hazard reduction, I'm gonna give you a tip that you can use each morning, but it's not what you'd expect to hear from a safety person. Ask yourself, what can I do today to make work go as smoothly as possible. Now, there are two reasons this is great. I suggest that you do this every morning before you leave the house or the shop, about the time that you pour that first cup of coffee. And the first reason is, about 50% of safety is just thinking before you do things. And if you ask yourself that, you'll have a minute to think through what you're gonna do that day, make sure that you have a plan to do it the right way, and if you do it before you leave the house, you also have the chance to gather the right tools and equipment to make it go easy. A lot of times people get injured using the wrong tool for the job or not having the right equipment. The second thing is, if you really ask yourself that day after day, what you'll get to is that your equipment uptime and keeping your equipment running in good shape is critical. So I used to work in paper mills and they have 24 seven uptime and their preventative maintenance plan is their Bible. The reason for that is, if you do your preventative maintenance, you're proactive. If you're waiting for things to break down before you do your maintenance, you're reactive. Meaning you don't have the right parts, you don't have your crew ready to do it, you probably don't have everything you need, and you're probably gonna rush through it to make sure that you get things put, to, put back together. That increases your errors, that it increases your injuries, and it, all increase, it also increases your accidents. So it's super critical to do that preventative maintenance. So start thinking about incorporating that into your safety. As we used to say in the paper mills, safety and reliability go hand in hand. Next, know your high risk activities. Bill talked a bit about this with serious injury and fatalities, but you guys know what you're seeing out there on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what you're probably putting yourself at risk for. So start making a mental note of that. And if you're doing things day after day that are just increasing the number of risks you're taking, Try to make a new habit out of it. Like the first thing you get into the truck, you buckle your seatbelt. Before you exit the cab of the equipment, you lower the implements. Make it a habit so you don't have to think about it. Your life will be easier and you'll be safer. Next, this may seem pretty intuitive, but unsafe acts result in accidents. Now, the cool thing about this is we actually have some cool numbers that you can use as a rule of thumb about it. So there's this guy. His name was William Herbert Heinrich, and in the 1930s, he was working in the insurance industry. He watched people in factories, and he started noticing trends in how often they would get injured. I know this is a little hard to see, but what he said was for every 3,000 at-risk behaviors, there were 300 near misses, meaning things that were almost an accident or an injury, but luckily weren't. For every 300 of those, there were 29 minor injuries, and then for every 29 of those, there was one major injury or fatality. So you can see it happens in a predictable way. In fact, people are trying to sell apps now that say they can predict when your company is gonna have the next accident. And it's based off this same theory. Where this falls apart is with work that's high hazard where you don't get many opportunities to get it wrong. So think of things like live electrical work. You can't make many mistakes before it leads to a fatality. So that's the other one up there. And the last one is know your mood. This might seem kind of odd, but this actually started long before we got more into mental health and mental awareness and all that sort of stuff. This company called Safe Start investigated tons of accidents and injuries. And what they found was that if you are in any of these four mental states, you are much more likely to have an accident. So think of things like rushing. We all know that we've made mistakes when we're rushing. We have too much pressure. We aren't thinking about what we're doing frustration, 
Anytime you start breaking out the sentence enhancers, your equipment's broke down, your life sounds like a country song, things aren't going your way, you know you're frustrated, you're more at risk. So it's best to just take a minute to recenter, step away from what you're doing, and make sure that your eyes and mind are on task. Next is fatigue. So we actually don't make good decisions when we're tired. And even if we caffeinate, it doesn't actually make you more alert. It just makes you make bad decisions more slowly. So you need to be aware of that when you're tired. We're all gonna go to work tired sometimes. Take steps to get some rest if you can. And if you can't, what you need to do is take a little bit of time and just realize it may take you longer to kind of get things done and make the right choices because when we're really tired, it's a lot harder. And then the last one is complacency. Complacency can kind of be that feeling like, well, I just don't care right now. Or I've done this a million times. I don't need to be careful about it. I know what I'm doing. Anytime you're in that sort of mindset, you're more likely to get hurt. So that was the top of the sandwich. Now this bottom part of the sandwich is super important. This is what keeps a bad day from becoming a tragic day. Because we all know things may get sideways on us from time to time. Even if we do our best at managing the risks and reducing hazards, there are times that things aren't gonna go like we want them to. In those cases, it is critical that you have your loss management things in order. That can be having your helicopter spot mapped out so you know the coordinates and know how to get help if somebody does get hurt at work. It can be your first aid, AED, making sure your insurance policies haven't lapsed, doing your preventative maintenance, having fire protection equipment ready, and also always having a way to communicate, whether it's a cell phone, radio, or whatever you need. So, out of all this, I think this kind of rings true. Working safe may get old, but so do those who practice it. When it comes to work, especially in logging, you are already at a higher risk just by the career choice you've made. Reduce your risk as much as possible to maximize your rewards. But with that, I wanna just let you know, safety isn't about never taking a risk. It's about choosing the risks that are worth taking. So take calculated risks and take them when the reward is gonna improve your life. So from us here at Ally Safety, we say work safely, but live boldly. Thank you.